And I want to talk to you this morning, the title of the message today, and if you want to turn to Judges chapter 3, verse 31, uh, the title of the message today is All Because of the Brave. This morning we come to the Memorial Day weekend where we remember that all gave some and some gave all. We remembered the flag-draped coffins that returned to the tear-stained face of a wife and a child. We remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. And that is something we should never forget. And I love to hear the star-spangled banner, Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. And we know that Francis Scott Key wrote that at Fort McHenry being pounded by the British in 1812. And all oh, before the sun came up the next morning, the flag was still furling in the air. And he wrote that poem that we t turned into a song, and it ends over the land of the free. What does it say next? And the home of the brave. Somebody actually said the reason we are the land of the free is because of the brave. And that's what I want to talk to you this morning, all because of the brave. Would you stand with me this morning? Because if we're going to have revival, if we're going to stand up to this demonic agenda, if there's going to be hope for our country and hope for our children and hope for our future, it will be all because of the brave. Can you say amen this morning? And I want us to look at a soldier this morning. Perhaps his name is not on the Vietnam Memorial in Washington. Perhaps there's not a monument to this soldier. He is not the unknown soldier, for we know his name. In Judges chapter 3, verse 31, we're going to talk about a brave soldier, all because of the brave. Judges chapter 3, verse 31, if you're there, say amen. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath. Listen to this. He slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad. And I like these last few words. And he delivered Israel, all because of the brave. Father, I pray anoint your servant to preach the word of God. We have prayed this morning. We have worshiped and giving. We have sung. And, and God, we now come to the preaching of the everlasting, eternal word of God. I pray, God, that you would cause me to decrease and you increase. I pray this message will not be about me, but it will be about you. I pray that you would send forth your word and heal us today, and we'll give you the praise and give us a few good men and a few good women, all because of the brave, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. As you're being seated, tell somebody, be brave. Amen. We don't know much about him. The Bible has 800,000 words in it. But there's only 50 words given to his remembrance. We find him in our text this morning and mentioned one other place. But in those 50 words, we know he made a difference. We know he affected eternity. We know he was one of the brave. His name was Shamgar. Say that with me, Shamgar. I was preparing this message, and I was so thankful my mother named me Ricky. <laughs> Shamgar. <laughs> you see, he came on the scene during the time of the judges. Now, you remember the time of the judges, Bible students. Uh, this was the time in Israel between Moses and Joshua and the conquering of the land and before the kingdom was established under King Saul. This was a time of really uh, where God raised up individual leaders. Uh, and it was a sad time because look at Judges chapter 21 and verse 25. It was during those days that there was no king in Israel and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Does that sound like today? People are doing what's right in their own eyes when we ought to be doing what is right in God's eyes. 
And you remember those times in the judges from your Bible study? God raised up a Samson and who took the gates of the city, set the fields on fire, uh, tore uh, the lion to pieces. Uh, uh, you heard about Deborah. Ah, Deborah arose. Pastor preached on Deborah just a few weeks ago. Uh, you heard about Gideon, you know, uh, with the sword of the Lord and Gideon and just 300. And, and God can do amazing things through the most humble of people. And, and all he needs is one characteristic, and it's called bravery. These are the more famous ones, but Shamgar, just a few words are mentioned, but what an impact he had. Go back to Judges chapter 3, verse 31. What an impact. He, he slew 600 men with an ox goat. He delivered Israel. Our country needs deliverance. Our country needs an awakening. Our country is on the precipice of a divine, wrathful judgment of God, aborted children, uh, uh, the agenda of, of, the, of the evil one, uh, and we need somebody to do something. Uh, we need uh, those uh, who will be brave. Uh, and in thinking about those who have given their life for our country and thinking about all that we're seeing uh, if, and all that is needed, uh, if we're going to see a turnaround, if we're going to see a mighty move of God, if we're going to do damage to the enemy, and we can, uh, if we're going to make a difference, uh, it will be if we we take the spirit of Shamgar, it will be all because of the brave. Would you give the Lord a hand of praise here this morning? Amen. All because of the brave. Let me give you three things this morning. Point number one, Shamgar acknowledged wickedness in his land. He acknowledged wickedness in his land. And that's what we have today. We have wickedness in the land. In fact, we were a Christian nation. What do you mean by that? There was a time when the majority of Americans believed in God, believed in the Bible, believed they should make things right with God. They might not have read the Bible. They might not have had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, but the average American knew inside that there was a God, that there is a real Bible, and that they should, before they die, make things right with God. Most of the people in America believe that for a time. Then things changed, and we went from being a Christian nation to a post-Christian nation, where things changed, where now a majority of people don't go to church. Used to, in America, most everybody went to church on Sunday morning. Today, not a majority goes to church. And a majority of people uh, back in the old days believed the Bible was the Bible. All you had to do was get up and say, the Bible says, and everybody would believe it. But now a majority of people don't believe in the Bible. And a majority of people don't feel like they've really got to worry about death. Well, I'm a good person. I'm a good American. That's a post-Christian nation. We went from being a Christian nation to a post-Christian nation, and now we've gone even further. We are now an anti-Christian nation, where now we have a majority of people who are for 100% uh, against Christianity, and they're doing things to stop preachers and to stop churches. And if you tell them the Bible says, they're like, that don't matter to me because I believe all books are, are religious, and I don't believe in the Bible, and I don't believe it, that when I die, I'm going to go to hell. Uh, we are in an anti-Christian nation, uh, and my friend, I want to tell you, it's in times like these, uh, just like for Shamgar, he stood up, uh, and he made a difference, uh, and if we're, listen, this may be an anti-Christian nation, uh, but that's all right. Uh, I still have the weapons. Uh, I still have God on my side. Uh, I still have people People I can influence, uh, and somebody say amen this morning, uh, that if you're going to make a difference, uh, it'll be because uh, of the brave. Uh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. In fact, I was thought about this when it comes to America. This so, so nails it. A spider dropped a single strand down from the rafter of an old barn, and he began to weave his web. Days, weeks, months went by, and the web grew and grew and grew. Its increasingly elaborate maze, beautiful in a sense, continued to catch flies and mosquitoes and other small insects, providing 
the spider with a daily buffet of bugs. The spider built his web larger and larger until it became the envy of all the other spiders. And one day this productive spider was traveling across his web when he noticed one single strand up in the rafter. And he said, I wonder why that single strand is there. It doesn't catch any mosquitoes. It doesn't provide me with any dinner. It doesn't add to my pantry. So the spider concluding that that one single strand was unnecessary, he climbed as high as he could and he severed it. But in that moment, the entire web fell upon itself, tumbling to the floor of the barn, taking the spider with it. I believe that describes America. Because we have forgotten that it is God that has blessed us. God that has given us prosperity. It is in God we trust. Somebody put your hand together and say amen this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 says, This know also in the last days perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, uh, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, and con false accusers. Aren't we seeing that? If you're in the, a certain political party or if you're a certain political president, you're going to be on trial and you're going to have to defend yourself and others get away from, get away. Uh, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of them that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. Shamgar, number one, acknowledged wickedness in his land. Number two, Shamgar, he not only acknowledged the wickedness in his land, he used the weapon that was in his hand. He had an ox goad, and with an ox goad, he delivered Israel. Shamgar didn't have technology. He didn't have cell phones. He didn't have a social media place page. He didn't have political connections. He didn't have an AK-47. He didn't have a helicopter. He didn't have an army. What did he have in his hand was just an ox goad. An ox goad. Let me give you two things about the ox goad. What is an ox goad? Well, an ox goad is a cattle prod. As the name implies, it is used to goad the oxen to keep them plowing. And I don't think that's insignificant because when you're talking about an ox goad, you know, you're, you're goading that animal to, to move it forward. And you know, the world does the same to us. Every time I turn around, I'm being goaded by something in the world. You can't even watch TV. A commercial for uh, uh, some kind of new drug has come out, and they show scenes of, of couples with their children, and in part of those scenes, they're going to show two men uh, hugging and kissing one another, or two women uh, uh, embracing one another. And what is that? They're just goading you. Amen? Uh, and you go to I don't go, but you go to Target, uh, and you just see if you see a goat out there in the children's department uh, with little babies uh, with, uh, with a transgender celebration uh, and, uh, and uh, the Dixie Chicks. I remember several years ago, uh, uh, they, they came out against America and Taylor Swift and drag queens in the public, in the public schools, uh, in the school library, drag queens. It's celebrated, uh, and my friend, it's a goat. Uh, the world is trying to use the ox goad themselves. Uh, they're trying to goad. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's time that we take our goad. Uh, what is our goad? The Word of God. Amen. Uh, and let's use the goad of praise. Uh, yeah, let's use the goad of the promises. Uh, let's use the ox goad of the Holy Spirit. Uh, yes, let's use the ox goad of the Word. Uh, because I'm going to tell you, their goads are powerful, but you put it in the hands of, of a man who's in the hands of God, uh, and we can make a difference. Uh, all because of the brave. Can you say amen this morning? In fact, it really doesn't matter. That's the second thing. An ox goat, it really doesn't matter what the instrument is. The Bible says Ehud, Ehud used, uh, had a dagger in his, he was, he was left-handed. <laughs> Any lefties out there today? <laughs> Brother James, you're left-handed. Congratulations, you, me, and 
You and me and Barack Obama are left-handed. Amen. Oh, and Bill Clinton. Amen. <laughs> Let me move on before the anointing <laughs> lifts. <laughs> I think I might be goading somebody here. <laughs> oh, Ehud, you know, he was left-handed, so he had, his, he had his dagger on this side. Well, any fighting man, you know, has the dagger on this side. And, and so he went to, the, to that wicked king, and, and he said, I'd like to say something to you. And, and the king said, say on. And, and he pulled that out of the, out of the other side and, uh, and stabbed it all the way into him. I'm not going to describe it how the Bible describes it. Trust me, it's R-rated but uh, for graphic uh, violence. Uh, and, uh, and he just left, and... And his servants kept waiting and waiting. Well, what's taking him so long, you know? And they went in there, and they found out that God had you and, uh, and Israel had a great victory because somebody used a weapon in their hand. Amen? And there was Jael. He, he had a, uh, she had a hammer. She, ladies, yeah. And uh, people say, well, women can't fight in the Army, Air Force, Marines. And, and I, I am proud, and I'll, I'll say this, one of our own Michaela Evans has gone to the Air Force, and we celebrate that, and, and that God can use male or female. Amen? And Jael, uh, one of those evil kings, uh, was running for his life, and, and uh, she said, come on in. I'll make you some pancakes and some biscuits, you know. And, and uh, he was hungry, and she gave him some milk, and, and he snoozed, and she just picked up a tent peg with a hammer. It's hammer time, praise God. Boom, 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 and God brought a victory. Somebody give him praise. Now, you know how it happens? All because of the brave. Oh, and old Gideon had a torch, a teapot, and a trumpet. Samson had the do uh, uh, donkey's jawbone, uh, and David just had a slingshot. Uh, and I want to tell you, it really doesn't matter. In the same way, the ox code was a simple tool in the hands of a simple man. That simple man was but a tool in the hands of an all-powerful God. As the lowly ox code became a powerful instrument in Shamgar's hand, so did Shamgar become a powerful instrument instrument in God's hands. I, I want to tell you whatever it is, uh, God can use you uh, to use something uh, to make a difference uh, all because of the brave uh, in these times. Can you say amen? amen? Shamgar dealt with the wickedness in his land. He used the weapon in his hand, and he was willing to sacrifice in his stand. And we got to take a stand. Amen? We've got to stake take a stand. That's point three. He was willing to die. He was willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. Aren't you so glad this Memorial Day that there were people, and you saw people on this stage, they got up here, and we celebrated them, but they knew the cost. They knew when they signed up that they may have to make the ultimate sacrifice. And Shamgar was willing. I mean, when you take on one bad person, let alone two and three, this guy took a stand against 600. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. Amen. Now, in my mind, I, I don't know how he did it. He had an ox go, Brother Blue. I don't know how he did it. How, how in the world can you kill 600 men with an ox go? And I think I found out what happened. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 23. If you go to 2 Samuel, we're going to go forward about 500 years to another man who stood his ground. His name is Shama. And after him was Shama, the son of Agi the Harite. And the Philistines, look, there they are. The Phil they just keep on coming, don't they? 500 years later, still dealing with the Philistines. People think, well, when we win this election, we won't have to deal with them anymore. Oh, no. We're going to have to deal with them until our dying day because the devil, until God throws them in the bottomless pit, the devil's going to keep coming back. But Shama, 500 years later, the, uh, the Philistines were gathered together in a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines, some of the other people. And there are other churches that are fleeing, other churches that are lowering the standards. 
other churches that are ordaining gay people to preach. There are other churches who are taking out blood in the hymnal. But look at verse number 12. It says, But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it, and he slew the Philistines, with the, and the Lord wrought a great victory. So I don't know what Shamgar did, but I believe Shammah got his inspiration. And aren't we inspired by those great founding fathers of our country? Uh, aren't we inspired by men uh, who gave uh, their all and took their stand? Uh, aren't we inspired by Patrick Henry who said, give me liberty or give me death? Uh, aren't we inspired by the Marines on Iwo Jima hoisting the American flag? Uh, aren't we inspired by people who have taken a stand? Uh, and I'll tell you, if a man can defend a bean patch is basically what it was, lentils, beans. Uh, if he said, you're not having my bean patch, uh, and every Philistine that came against him, uh, dozens and dozens, uh, they were all killed. Uh, why? Because God can use you, uh, and God can use whatever is in your hand. Uh, and I promise you, uh, the only way it will happen will be all because uh, of the brave. Say amen, somebody. His name was Cleby McClary. I couldn't figure out how to pronounce his first name. Cleb McClary, C-L-E-B-E McClary. He's got, he's got a patch um, where his left eye had once been. He's got a, a hook extended from the artificial limb where a strong arm used to be. So he's got a hook. He's got a patch. He had been through many surgeries at 26 years of age, he left his coaching career to enlist in the United States Marine Corps. While serving his 19th recon um, through the jungles of Vietnam, uh, Cleve and his 12 men were attacked. Two gave their lives, four were severely wounded. McClary was miraculously lifted to safety by helicopter. And listen to this, on a plaque presented to Lieutenant McClary by his admiring men, is his statement. Here's the statement, quote, In this world of give and take, there are all too few who are willing to give what it takes. And God give us some Shamgars. And God give us some Zachary Therringtons. And God give us you that are out there in those seats. Give us some brave people. And listen, if you're waiting for everything to be good and didn't do something for God, forget it. Shamgar didn't wait till he had all that he needed. He didn't wait till everybody else was on board. He didn't wait till the, the sun was shining. My friend, you got to learn to serve God uh, in the tough times. Uh, you got to learn to serve God when the, when the, when the house is full uh, or when the cupboard is empty. You got to learn to do when the wallet has plenty and when the wallet has a little. Uh, when the kids are behaving and when they're not. When life is great and things aren't great. Uh, no matter what it is, God needs some Shamgars who will take a stand. Even, even when times are really, really bad. And I'm going to tell you, it's a sacrifice to stand. We're in an anti-Christian nation, and you go to your job and you tell them you're not wearing a gay pride shirt, you may, be get, may get written up, demoted, or fired because you're now part of hate. Because you stand. And you know, for the last several years, I've worked a secular job, and I've enjoyed it and loved it, and, and uh, it's, it's been a, I still work there just a little, little tiny bit, uh, just a few hours here and there. Um, but every time I turned around, as an employee, I had to take sensitivity training. And here was goading me. <laughs> and then in June, all the other employees were dressing in certain attire to present present Gay Pride Month, and I thought to myself, it's going to eventually get to the point where they're going to make all of make us. You've got to, and that's when I'm going to have to decide, am I going to lose my job? I'm going to love gay people. I've worked with them. The transgenders, uh, don't make fun of them. Can you believe to change your whole body, take drugs to make you grow things and go, surgeries. You know what the problem is? They're looking for something. They're looking for something because way down inside, they're hurting. 
And they think if they can, and the devil has told them if you can transition to another gender. Friend, you don't need to transition to another gender. You just need to be born again. Is anybody born again this morning? The old things have passed away. And you've got to take a stand in public school. Public school. When you, when you stand for the sanctity of life, that we value human life in the womb can, at the moment of conception. And I'm just telling you, you either believe in God or you don't. Well, I, you know, there's people that are in bad situations and this, that, and the other has happened. You either believe in God or you don't. Every You say, well, it may not happen in your family. I don't. Let me tell you something. I have a greater family. It's called the family of God. Amen? I have a greater loyalty, not to my own children, not to my own wife. My greatest loyalty is to God Almighty. Amen? And I, you say, that's strong, but it's not strong enough because uh, obviously we've got a lot of deceived people out there. Life begins the moment of conception. In the worst situation, uh, God could take that conceived baby uh, and that baby could be another Shamgar to stand uh, and there'd be another all because of the brave. Uh, we have no right to, to take a life. Uh, I, I've, I've seen people say, well, uh, at the moment of conception, that, that, uh, that conceived baby can't live without the mother. No. Let me tell you something. That is true. Uh, but I want you to understand something. D the, before God made Jeremiah, he said, I knew you in the womb. I wish somebody would say amen. amen. We, we got the ultrasound pictures of my nephew. Surprisingly, he looks just like me. Just like me. He even has a little middle piece. No, I'm just being facetious. And you're talking about pictures in the womb. Amen? <laughs> no, man, I'm taking my stand. I'm not voting for a candidate that is for abortion. Amen, now. I don't care if you're Republican or plutocrat or Democrat or Democrat. Well, I don't care what you are. Amen. I oppose racism. I am. That's, I got washed in the blood. It washed all the racism out of my life. My black brothers and sisters are my brothers and sisters. I, I saw uh, Brother James uh, Lindsay, uh, pastor of the New Win Church in Bethel, North Carolina. I pastored in Bethel at the Pentecost Owners Church. Uh, your mom was a, became a member there, Sister Barbara, uh, who used to be here, and then she married a man up there, and I became her pastor twice. And, uh, and, uh, uh, but we would have a joint meeting at the uh, new, he had a nice church, the nicest church in Bethel, and beautiful pulpit, and I was so proud of myself to get to preach behind Brother James Lindsay's pulpit. I saw him just the other day at Best in Burgers, and, and you know, preachers like to eat hamburgers, amen. But but uh, but he's my brother, amen. Uh, and uh, and when we had those joint services, I had one or two in my church. They're like, well, I don't know if we want to go over to a black church. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you not washed in the blood? Uh, wait a minute. Are you planning to go to heaven? Because when I saw a glimpse of heaven, I haven't seen heaven, I haven't been to heaven, but John did see that there was a multitude of every kindred, of every tribe. It's time to take our stand against racism. Can you say amen this morning? I will take my stand for racism, but I'm not, I am against critical race theory. I am against this notion that all white people are bad. Listen, everybody's bad. <laughs> and, and I mean it. The Bible says we've all sinned and come short. Well, the white people brought the slaves over on the slave ships. They did. But the Arabs did too, more than the, uh, the white people ever did. I'm talking about the Arabs, yeah, the Arabs, the Muslims. And you say, Brother Ricky, you're saying controversial things. No, I'm not. I'm telling you what, you read your history. That's the problem. They change history, don't they? You say, well, I don't like history. You better learn to love it because they'll change it and you won't know where you're coming or going. Uh, my friend, uh, I'm telling you, all lives matter. Black lives matter. White lives matter. Hispanic lives matter. I'm going to take my stand uh, because of the brave. 
I'm going to take my stand at boys are boys and girls are girls. My little nephew is going to the boys' bathroom with his Uncle Ricky if I have to take him. We're not going to the girls' bathroom. I mean, while he was a baby, yeah, but I mean, that's a baby. But when he gets on up, he's going to the men's bathroom. And little girls need to go to the girls' bathroom. And we are living in a day where men will change themselves to girls or women and participate in sports, and they'll win awards in swimming and other things. And it's not because they're equal with other women. It's because they have the muscles of, of a biological male. People say that's highly offensive. It is not offensive. God made it. A man is wonderful at being a man. And a woman is wonderful at being a woman. Amen? And, and God made them, male and female. Praise God. We don't need to be, they want to get to the point where there is no differentiation. How dumb is that? It's a beautiful thing. Listen, it, it, that's like having no paint colors. Praise God, all white, this is white, that's white, or that's brown, and that's brown, and that's, no, sir. God is a God of variety, and, and I'll tell you what, he, he, when he made Adam and Eve, I'm telling you, when he made male and female, brother, we're still trying to figure out all the ins and outs of that. So, amen. If you've been married longer than five minutes, you know uh, that God is a God of variety. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. We need to take our stand that God made them male and female. We need to take our stand that, that there doesn't need to be drag queens in schools or pornographic But Right here in Wilson, there were two or three books, I believe at Elm City Middle, and don't quote me on this. I got to go back. Some very, some Shamgar in Wilson found it. And went to the school board. <laughs> and they just shut him down. And so they finally gave him a chance to talk about it is not right to have pornographic sexual descriptions in middle school. And so one of the board members answered him and said, Mr. So-and-so, you're only talking about two or three books. And Mr. So-and-so, I've looked through the records and nobody has checked it out but one or two. So, Mr. So-and-so, you're really making a big deal out of nothing. Boy, my Shamgar spirit rose in me, and I wanted to reply back and say, what if one book in the library of, of Wilson, North Carolina, one book and one paragraph said it was okay for child pornography or if it was okay for slavery? What if one paragraph, uh, oh, could we say, well, it's only in one paragraph, and nobody really checks it out. Uh, I'm telling you, if there was one book with one paragraph about how good it is to have slavery in America, they would be protesting to take it out. Uh, and I'm so telling you slavery is wrong, but I'll tell you there's another sin too, the sin of sexual fornication, and those things are wrong, and we need to keep our children pure and protected, and we need to take our stand. Shamgar, the wickedness in his land, the weapon in his hand, the sacrifice to take a stand. And I'm going to close. The greatest freedom won for us was not on Iwo Jima or at Fort McHenry or in Fallujah. The greatest freedom won for us was on a hill called Calvary. And there our heavenly Shamgar took an instrument called the old rugged cross and he killed all of Satan and sin. And the ultimate victory will be won in the sweet by and by. Can you say amen? On a battlefield in France in 1918, Sergeant Major Robert S. McCormick was instrumental in saving the life of his commanding officer, Major Harry Parkin. Every year, therefore, for 25 years, on the anniversary of him saving his life, Mr. Parkin wrote a letter to express his gratitude to the man that saved his life. In 1943, in the 25th of those annual letters, after 25 years, Mr. Parkin wrote, 
And I'm closing with this. He said to the man that saved his life, he said, I again want to express to you appreciation for another year of life which I could not have ordinarily have enjoyed had it not been for you and the price you were willing to pay to save my life. I want you to know how grateful I am. Can we tell the Lord that this morning? Can we stand this morning as we honor those who have served and as we remember those who have died? Can we, like this man, say, Lord, I thank you and how grateful I am that you gave your life so that I could have eternal life. Can we just lift our hand and praise him for that today? Lord, we just thank you, God, that you sent your only begotten son, and you took a stand on Calvary, and there you defeated the enemy. And Father, thank you, Lord, that you died like our soldiers, so many soldiers across those battlefields. You died so that I could live. And Father, I give you the praise, and I want to live my life every day in honor of you, because I wouldn't be here, Jesus. <laughs> I wouldn't be here, Jesus, if it weren't for you. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Jesus paid the ultimate sacrifice for you. Have you forgotten? He is knocking on the door of your heart, and he's saying, let me in. He wants to save you this morning. He died to save you from sin. You say, well, preacher, I'm a good person. You may be in so many ways. But all have sinned, and all are guilty. We will all stand before the judge, and he will mete out justice because that's all the just God can do. You say, well, that frightens me. It should because there is danger in not knowing Christ. But the good news is, before the red, white, and blue was hurled in Fort McHenry, Jesus shed red, and he took on the blue of the bruising. And on the cross was the red, white, and blue. And if you'll trust him and if you'll ask him to forgive you, just say, Jesus, forgive me. I have sin. And my greatest sin is pride, thinking that I'm too good. Oh, humble me, Jesus. I cast myself at your mercy. I will stand before the judge, and I will give an account, and I'm afraid. For it is appointed a man wants to die. But Jesus, I trust you, and I will seek you, and I pray, God, that you would cause me to be born again. And I can never be good enough, but Lord, through your grace, you will help me to serve you. Pray that prayer this morning. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. And I believe he'll do it this morning. Has anybody done it already? If you have, would you just lift your hand and say, I, I have prayed that prayer. I'm talking about any time, whether today or five years ago. Has anybody this morning been to Calvary? And have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior? Have you? Would you lift your hand and praise him? Would you remember the Lord? Would you remember the sacrifice that he made? Hallelujah. Would you remember the red, white, and blue on Calvary? And now. Here's my closing prayer, and I want you to, to, for us to, we don't have, again, we don't have service this evening. I know we've got a lot of activities today, but I want us to take our stand right here at this altar. And if you've got a lost loved one, I want you to take your stand, and I want you to believe God that they'll be saved. And if you've got children in school, I want you to take your stand that you're going to lead them to godliness, and you're going to help them. If you're at a job and you have to take sensitivity training, I want you to come and take your stand. By God's grace, you'll be loving, you'll be kind, you'll be respectful, but you cannot compromise on that which is wrong. I need some patriotic people. I need some Holy Ghost-filled people. I need some people that will wield wield the weapon of their praise uh, and to goad the enemy this morning. Can we just goad the devil this morning? Uh, can we just can we just make him real upset this morning? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, uh, we just come today to take our stand, Father. We just come right now, and I pray, Lord, uh, for every person here, oh God, this morning, that you would just touch. Oh God, we're going to take our stand. 
We're going to go to the enemy. We're going to win ultimately. But until then, we're going to be on the battlefield for the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you this morning. Would you ask God to help you to be brave? Because of the brave. God, help me to be brave this morning. Oh, I praise you, Jesus. I give you the glory. Oh, Lord, I want to take my stand for the cross. I take my stand for the sanctity of life. I take my stand that Jesus is the only way. I do it in love. I do it, God, Lord, with a winsome spirit. God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, Lord, give us some sham guards this morning. Give us some sham guards this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.